Quansheng TK11 Power and Harmonics Tests. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're on to part two of the Quansheng TK11. This is the TK11 8 model. And this one's been a bit of a delay coming on it because of various issues. I'm sure if you've read my posts, you would have found out what those were. So I've got a power meter connected to the radio already, and the radio is already on. It's on the two meter calling channel at the moment. So I believe the specification for this is uh, less than or equal to 10 watts on the high power setting. So if we key the radio up, that's on the high power setting. There is a letter H on the display. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Well, that, that was on the high power setting and that was saying about 5.7 watts. Got to consider, though, that this is going through an RF adapter tree and some RG58. And it's using a PL259, which, isn't, which aren't ideal on, on the VHF and UHF part of the radio spectrum. It's not really designed to be, to be used there. So that's going to introduce a bit of losses. There's two adapters on here. That'll be part, part of the losses, and this coax probably is as well. So it's probably going to... It's, to my watts is still passing the test, so that's fine. Okay, so while I've got this meter connected, we'll have a look at 70 sems. So let's uh, do that, shall we? Just to find the band button. I've gone straight past it. Uh, keep forgetting that I've got to actually press this first before entering the frequency. That's actually on low power, so I'll have to bring it up. So menu, menu 2, transmit power. Let's set that to high. And let's confirm that. Come out of there. That's now on high power. This meter says 4.3 watts. So it's within the specification of less than or equal to 10 watts. <laughs> because that's what they say, less than or equal to 10 watts. And again, UHF, this arrangement is going to be a bit lossy, so it's probably a bit more than that. And this will transmit on 6 meters and 12 through 10, I believe, it will transmit as well, including... 11 meters for CB. So we'll have a look at that, but I've got to use a different meter for that because that one's only for VHF and UHF. So I'll just pause while I swap the meters over. Okay, so I've got the meter swapped over now. So we're on my main test meter. I've got the radio just down here. I'll just see if I can bring it up into shot. So for the interest of the CB community, I've put this onto CB channel 20 in the UK, 27.78.125, because this will actually transmit there. So this is actually pretty much wide open. But it'll transmit on 10 metres as well. So this would be indicative of 10 metres as well. Now, it's quoted uh, less than or equal to 5 watts within, within that range. So we're on the 20 watt scale, which is this one here. I'll just double check this meter is actually calibrated properly. Uh, should be now. I don't think I necessarily need to do that, but it does help. Should be no reflected power because it's into a dummy load. I need to clean some controls up, I think. Yeah, so that's somewhere between three and four watts on that meter. Uh, that meter I've referenced against my Midland 3001 serviced by, by Richard at UK FMCB Radio Servicing. So that's who I bought that off. So that meter's been pretty much set against that because... I know that that radio is doing 4 watts because I've seen the service video and also I have the service sheet to prove it. So this is doing between 
3 and 4 watts on UK CB channel 20. Just for the sake of argument, I'm just going to put... I've just done it again, haven't I? So let's make sure I press the right button. Okay, it's, I have to put zero ahead of it first. So zero, two, nine, zero, zero, zero. So I'll just put 29 megs in there for the sake of argument. Slightly lower. But I'd say fair enough. So it will also transmit on six meters. So I'll just change to that band. Um, so the radio is currently on. I can bring it in to show you. 51.5, that's about the 6 meter band. FM only, I must point that out. It's FM only across the board. It won't transmit a AM upper sideband or lower sideband. It's FM only on transmit. It'll receive upper sideband, lower sideband and AM, but it won't transmit. So we've got the 6 meter band. It is on high power, I will check. And just a shade over the 3 watts, I'd say. Let me just double check the calibration of this. I don't know whether this affects the power reading or what it does, or whether it's just for the SWR reading. Seems to be just for the SWR reading, because that really hasn't moved a lot. So I say just over 3 watts on that. Which means if I go to the 2.5 watt scale, it just goes off the end. So that's pretty much the power readings for it. I'm not going to check the medium and low, because they're obviously going to be lower. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put it on the spectrum analyzer and check for harmonics and spurious emissions because I don't really want to use it on the air if it's going to be putting out any harmonics anywhere. And also I expect good things from this because it is, it is a Quan Sheng at the end of the day. So let's swap to the, the spectrum analyzer and also have it picture in picture as well. Okay, so we're now back with a spectrum analyzer and the radio is on the two meter calling channel. I will just check it's supposed to be there. Yeah, it looks like it. So if I key this up, we should get a lot of spikes like that. So let's give that a chance to settle. It'll take a couple of seconds. And we are looking. Well, borderline, I'd say. So we do have, and I'll point it with a stylus there, we have that. But otherwise, it seems fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save capture. I'll call this one 144, so I know what it is. Enter. And I'll put that up on the screen so you guys can see it. I'll let go of that now, because that attenuator is going to start getting hot. It's a bit warm, but it's not too hot. Okay, so let's try that on 27 megs. That's a bit for the interest of those of you who want to use this on CB. And it'll also be interesting for people on, on the amateur bands that want to use it on 10 meters, because it'll be quite similar and in output cleanliness at that. So if we go to load settings, I press 27 harmonics. That'll set it up for the for 27 97125 I'm guessing that's supposed to be. So if I go to the band button and we'll go to that. I have just gone past where I needed to be. Okay, so I'll have to set the frequency because I did change it. Seven, seven, nine, one. Actually, it's only going to go to five. It's like, you know. yeah, it's not gone on frequency. So I'll just pause while I sort that out. Okay, so I've got it as close as possible because the step wasn't quite working. So we've got the. Spectrum Analyzer, it's all set up, ready to go. I'm going to key it up at that. And straight away, there is something definitely noticeable there. You can probably see where I'm pointing. And if 
you want to use this on CB or 10 meters, that's not particularly good by the looks of it. So I'm going to put that up on the screen for you to, to see that. I'll obviously have to capture that first. So 27. Enter. Now I'll let go of that so I don't boil my attenuator to death. Yes, that didn't look particularly good. Has to be said. Well, I don't think it did anyway. So we'll go on with the next one, which is... Um, if I just press the band button, we can get to that. Six meters. So let's load. Let's not do the capture because I don't want to be in there, do I? I'm using a little stylus pointer thing off an old uh, Windows phone that I don't have anymore. Uh, so, load settings. So it's much easier than that guitar pick thing, it has to be said. Go to that, and that says it's on 51.51. So, let's put it on to 51.51. Might have to change the step for that again as well. 51.5 should be fine. I will try it at that. Okay. And let's give it a couple of minutes to settle. And yeah, that doesn't look too great to me from, from where I'm sitting. And it doesn't make it any good on six meters either. Yeah, let's um, transmit again. Yeah, that's not great. I'm just going to let it settle first. It's this one that wasn't looking great. It's just settling again. I won't say that was too good. So I'm just going to save that capture. I'll save it as 51. So I know what it is when I come to reference it. And I'll pop that up on the screen for you guys to see. I'll let go of the key now. So it seemed all right on two meters. Let's just double check that. So I go back to the two meter band. You never know. I've checked all the connections are tight and everything. So I'll make sure everything's fine there again. Make sure it's still reading the same as what it was. Because, you know, it's worth double checking considering the other bands have just shown themselves to be not great. Yeah, that. One well, there, that number three is actually within 436 megs. So not ideal, but it's okay, it works. So the next thing I'll be doing with this will be doing an on-the-air test with it. And I'm probably not going to do that today because I want to go outside and do that. And it's, uh, well, it's... Chucking it down with rain today and blowing a bit of a gale. <laughs> it's not ideal. Anyway, so that was a look at the Quancheng TK11 on the power meter and the spectrum analyzer. And results are, seems all right on the two meter band. But if you want to use that on six meters or 10 meters and, uh, and CB, I would not advise doing that because it doesn't look as though it's very clean. Not unless you can get an inline filter you can screw in there. Anyway, this one, like I say, has been a bit late coming because of various issues which I've been posting about. So if you like uh, what I do, you can give it a thumbs up. And there's another button that works just as well. And there'll be a video pop up on the screen that the algorithm thinks you might like, but you might not like it, but the algorithm thinks you might like it. And always subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about any new videos as I put them up and you can also maybe chip in a bit towards the channel as well if you want you don't have to but it all goes back into the running of the channel uh, the, with the super thanks or you can buy a coffee or you can become a member to get some early access videos or just chip in a little bit towards the channel there's two tiers for, for that I mean you don't have to if you don't want to that's entirely optional my content remains free. And 
Of course, I've still got the tape measure Yagi to do. I couldn't do that on the day I wanted to do it because my arm just wasn't up for lifting anything down the stairs. So <laughs> that's unfortunate, but that is what happens sometimes. You do get a bit, uh, a bit ill when you don't want to, which we'll say. We'll leave it at that. And I've uh, started looking at uh, mesh core, the, uh, a new meshing system that ad addresses some of the issues of Meshtastic, by all accounts. Uh, it's promoted quite heavily by Andy Kirby, so if you want to find out all about Meshcore, go check out his channel. I uh, will be doing a bit on it myself uh, in, in coming months, probably. I'm not sure it'll be coming weeks. It'll probably be coming months, because it's going to take a while to get everything set up. But it might come sooner. And... Yeah, hopefully I can get that tape measure Yagi finished as well. It's just behind me in this room, actually, because I've had a bit of a spring clean. And there'll be more on this coming up as well. So, 7.3 for now. I'll catch you in the next one. And you never know, there might have to be some 3D printing again as well. <laughs> now I've got that going. Right, 7.3 for now.